Hello everyone and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Following a disturbing scenario that ended with a character's death in Wednesday's episode of Emmerdale, viewers are conjecturing about a murder plot twist. After just one episode, Ruby Milligan's mother Helen Fox was written off the ITV serial opera. Tuesday, after his mother-in-law kept calling, Caleb Milligan had an argument with her. She initially attempted to contact her daughter Ruby after years of separation, but Caleb answered the phone. Without telling Ruby, he blocked the phone, which led Helen to get in touch with Caleb directly. Caleb wouldn't let Helen see Ruby even after finding out that she was critically sick and didn't have much time left. He wanted £100,000 to tell Ruby the truth because Helen wanted to make amends before she died. Though Helen died before Ruby could see her, there are still unanswered questions regarding why she decided to rekindle her relationship at this particular time, according to the mirror. Hints were thrown that Helen had something vital to tell Ruby about the time Helen's death was officially announced, Caleb was spotted at the hospital, possibly making a comeback following his financial arrangement. Even though it seemed like he had just arrived, some fans thought there might be a deadly twist in the works, despite the fact that everyone knew Helen was dying, some viewers couldn't help but think Caleb was pulling a shady plot. They wondered if Helen knew something bad about him that Ruby may find out, and if he had killed her at the hospital so she wouldn't be able to see her daughter. In spite of the likelihood, some viewers couldn't help but believe Caleb was somehow connected, considering Helen's failing health and his absence. On social media, one viewer asked, why do I get the feeling that Caleb is behind her mum dying? One person surmised, Caleb killed her, another, I wonder if Caleb killed Ruby's mother, and a third, still undetermined. One, Kane and Charity look for Belle. Next week, Charity and Kane will be shocked to learn the truth about Belle's abuse in her marriage to abusive Tom. But, as they rush across the nation to help her, will it be too late? Since learning that Belle had aborted their child, Tom has increased the intensity of his oppressive control over her. Tom has been getting annoyed with a suspicious charity's meddling and has applied covertly for a position as a veterinarian in a distant area of Wales. In tonight's episode, Tom guilt-tripped Belle into accepting an impromptu holiday at the Welsh cottage he had shown her a few weeks prior, and the two quietly left the village after learning he had been granted a second interview for the position. Belle's phone was hidden in a kitchen drawer by Tom to make sure no one would find them. When Charity learns of the job interview through the gossip in the village and that Tom and Belle have already left without saying anything to their families, she becomes quite worried. Charity, who is experiencing severe anxiety, goes to Kane to discuss her worries. She mentions that Tom's behavior reminds her of D.I. Mark Bales, Rocky Marshall, the abuser she experienced. Emma Atkins told Every Soap at a recent press event that very subtle things are going on. However, I believe Charity recognizes the warning signs because she has endured abuse at some level from some of the people she has dated, most notably Bales, during the previous 20 years. She's had her eye on him, and he seems like a fascinating character. She notices that Belle has abruptly changed into a shadow of her previous self. When Kane can't seem to get in touch with Belle the next day, he starts to question whether Charity is right. According to Jeff Hordley, Tom has been really clever in the way he operates, and he's masking everything that's going on really well. Kane is clueless and doesn't sense that something is wrong with Tom, Charity is the one who makes him aware of this. Charity is shocked to discover how much security Tom has in place when she and Kane decide to break into Dale Head to look into Belle's missing mental health visit. Charity discovers Tom's budget book, a peculiar document in and of itself, in which he recorded the address of the Welsh cottage. The concerned couple then make the hasty decision to head to Wales after finding Belle's phone concealed away. However, they are taken aback by what they discover when they do go to the cottage that evening. There is blood on the door and the place is completely wrecked. What took place? Jeff says, Charity can sense trouble, but I don't think Kane quite believes it until he gets there. Even when he drives there, he's still not sure if they'll show up. Belle and Tom will be overjoyed, and will be like, oh, okay, hello. 2. Belle's horrifying experience is disclosed. On Wednesday, there will be a special flashback episode in which we go back four days to the time when Belle and Tom arrived at the cottage. At first, their holiday appears to be cheerful as they both look forward to getting to the cottage with their dog, Piper. 
However, Belle is mad at herself for losing her phone. But as time passes, Tom becomes more manipulative, and Belle becomes perplexed when she hears him talking on the phone about extending their stay at the cabin. We can assure you that this episode will be quite intense as Belle and Piper find themselves at the whim of a violent Tom, and their initially nice trip quickly turns into a genuinely frightening ordeal. The perfect cottage setting was easily found by the cast and crew, they didn't even have to leave the estate. The farm known as BWTHYN Aphelon in the program is actually Burden Head Farm, which is located at the entrance to the Emmerdale Village's private access road. According to Jillian Slight, head of design for Emmerdale, the location is actually part of Emmerdale's village complex, it's on the outskirts and hasn't really been seen by viewers so it's believable that it's a property 300 miles away from the Yorkshire Dales. The team had a blank canvas to design the ideal Welsh getaway in the newly constructed cottage from the previous year. We were free to furnish and decorate the inside and outside of the building because we have complete access to and control over it. The garden needed landscaping and planting to make it seem nice because it was really just a pile of construction debris. The entire project took roughly four weeks to finish. The building took the place of a similarly shaped cottage that had been demolished on the same plot. Longtime viewers may remember the back of that house as the third and last iteration of Emmerdale Farm, which aired from 1997 to 2002. The rear of the newly constructed cottage in 2024, Google, slash left, the previous cottage as it appeared on TV in 2000, ITV. The barn across the yard, where adoptive son Andy, Kelvin Fletcher, ignited the fire that accidentally killed Sarah Sugden, Allison Spiro, is now visible on screen as one of the butler's barns, where Tom was electrocuted and Minty the lamb died recently. In another scene, Mandy, Lisa Riley, is having a hard time making ends meet in the salon and it seems like things are getting close to breaking point. The fact that Sarah and Patty, Dominic Brunt, have to pay for their impending wedding and that Patty is blissfully ignorant of his fiancé's problems doesn't help the situation. Mandy ultimately tells Rona, Zoe Henry, her new drinking companion, the truth, but she can't bring herself to tell anybody else. Later in the week, as her concerns get more intense, will she be able to tell Patty the truth or will she instead devise a new plan to make some money? 4. Billy tells Dawn up at home farm that Rose, Christine Tremarco, has surprisingly prevailed in her continued effort to ruin Kim's, Claire King, life, even though her plan to drug her ex-husband Will, Dean Andrews, went terribly wrong this week. Olivia Bromley's daughter Dawn was the one who drank the tainted bubbly, which made her faint while driving and sent her crashing into Ella's vehicle. As a former addict, Dawn realized she had to have been injected with something, and although Kim was certain of the culprit, she was taken aback when Kim's gaze went to her. Kim tried to reassure Dawn that she would never do something like that now that they are family, after Dawn said that it wouldn't have been the first time she'd pulled off such a ruse, alluding to the time Kim had tried to drug her back in 2021. Rose was quick to twist the situation when Kim's lack of motivation was called into question. She said that Rose had been the intended target and that Kim had wanted to get rid of her. Will and Dawn came to an agreement, while Billy, J. Consul, chose to support Kim. Dawn would still find it hard to believe that Kim would turn on the family the following week, especially because it was Kim who broke their bubble and brought illness into the home, forcing Evan back into the hospital. Billy feels very bad about himself now, since he was the one who did the wrong thing that time. After returning home inebriated, he had a few beers with Mackenzie, Lawrence Robb, where Kim had taken him to one of the empty rooms and provided cover. Instead of letting Billy confess and further strain their marriage, Kim again pretended to have mixed with individuals during a business conference when Evan was unwell. Billy, unable to stand by Don's mistreatment of Kim any longer, tells Don that he was the one who burst their bubble and that Kim should have accepted responsibility for the family's well-being. Will Don change her mind about Kim? 5. Eric is revealed by Jai as Laurel, Charlotte Bellamy, asked Jai, Chris Bisson, to return to Holdgate and move out of Mulberry Cottage, the family is still suffering from their separation. Jai was shocked to learn that son Archie, Kaya C, had chosen to remain with Laurel and his step-siblings since he had been resolved to take Archie with him. A distraught Jai informed Laurel, I lost my dad, my wife, and my home. Soon he won't have anything to do with me. And now you also have my son. That's right, Laurel, you have everything you desire, and I have nothing. Excellent work. 
Anxious about the state of affairs, Jai determines that he must exact revenge on Eric, Chris Chittle, whose blackmailing of Jai on the Amit slash Sunni scenario has only made him more anxious in recent months. Brenda, Leslie Dunlop, and Rodney, Patrick Mower, who undoubtedly thought Eric's days of such treachery were long gone, are deeply upset when Jai tells them of Eric's planning. Jai is encouraged by Archie's apparent change of heart, though, as Laurel let the 11-year-old return to Holdgate with his father. Things nearly look amicable between Jai and Laurel when they later arrange to get together to commemorate the first anniversary of Rishi's passing on what would also be their first wedding anniversary. Is there worse to come for Jai and Laurel, or will they be able to put their disagreements aside and continue to be friendly even after they separate?